So today on the bench, on the weekly what is it number four, we want to look at these spark gaps. Now spark gaps are used on boards as a cheap way to stop maybe static or transit so they get bad enough to actually give them a path. We see here on this board we have isolation slots. We see that the solder mask is removed from those tracks across the isolation slots. And then we see the little sharp points or teeth across. For instance, here we have a, a capacitor. It's a mains capacitor. And across that capacitor, in case it did bridge across, the voltage got high enough it would actually bridge across here and actually go across this spark gap. The same on this one on the other side. If we look here, we also have the spark gap across the neutral and ground. It goes back to the ground pin. And the hot, the hot and the neutral, both the ground, actually go across the spark gaps as well, as well as these capacitors. If we look at this board, I, I believe this board to come out of a, a 20 inch monitor. And if we look at this board, it's got a good bit of protection on it. It's, it's got a, a two amp fuse that's 250 volt rated coming off the 120 volt mains. We do have several of these, these blue caps, which it is hard to read. but they are X1 rated. Of course, X1 and Y1 caps are gonna be industrial heavy duty rated. We also have an X2 cap here, the gray one. And X2, Y2 safety caps, they are made for regular household appliances, but are mains rated. So we look here we have a little resistive indicator and it's called TR601. And it is a MF71. And that's actually a NTC. It limits your inrush current. Basically a thermistor. It's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. We look here, we have another of actual X1 rated caps. We see the isolation on this board being a mains incoming uh, power supply for a monitor. We do have very good isolation. They put the line across on the, on the transformer. The only thing bridging across this separation line is this cap and this actual optocoupler. On the back side, we can see the same, that they did a good job keeping the isolation. They did put an isolation slot across that capacitor. But what we really want to look at today, since we just talked about gas discharge tubes, I thought it'd be interesting to look at this because these, these spark gaps are a cheap way of doing it. The voltage has to be higher Typically when it's isolated, there's a formula for it, but it's going to have to be over a thousand volts to, put the, to actually jump this gap. Even with the, uh, the solder mask removed and things, it's going to take a good bit. But if a spike does come in, that is a cheap way to actually quench a, a, a spark or a, um, a transit, or maybe even a static buildup discharge. So one thing I want to do, I want to bring over this little transformer and with just five volts, we're going to make, or at least we're going to try to make an arc, arc across this spark gap. I hadn't done this yet to make sure it'll work, 
But this is actually a high voltage transformer. I just got it off of eBay. It is actually a step up power module is what it was called. I like keeping these around. They can be fun to, to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it on now and just make sure it'll work. I might get something non-conductive. See if we can get this to bridge a little bit closer here. So yeah, that puts out quite a good little punch. Cut this off, make sure it's discharged. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder it across the solder points, not, not on the, I don't wanna solder it right on the teeth because I might make it pull back with the solder, but I'm gonna try to go to a point adjacent to it or close to it. So I got the board set up in a board holder here with some helping hands. I'm gonna go ahead and tin these wires just a little. It ain't gotta be pretty, I just want it to stick. I'm gonna put one of these across that ground connection. No extra solder needed there. Put one across here. Add some solder to that one. See if we can put it right there. There we go. Now I have the high voltage module across the pins. It's going to go across the spark gap. Make sure these are clear. We're only putting out about three to five volts here, but let's see what it does. I'm actually gonna kill the lights. So that's actually taking a, a very low voltage through a, a very high step up voltage module. Somewhere over 100,000 volts actually supposedly output on this module. I actually don't have a way to check it or verify it, but I do know it's high. So we see that even though this is a cheap, a very cheap way of stopping uh, a very high transit or static discharge, that it's actually very effective. So we see anything from, from NTCs to your X, X2, X1 rated caps, to spark gaps, to gas discharge tubes, and of course MOVs, to help on your input power protection. And of course fuses, always one of your first lines of defense is typically a, a mains rated fuse. So in this weekly what is it, we looked at the spark gap across isolation slots and just if you see them on a board, what they are, what they're for and, and just how well they work for 
you know, as cheap as they are to just manufacture. All they got to do is incorporate it in a design, and it's really just pennies associated with the cost, which it it doesn't seem like much to say these are around a dollar to a dollar fifty when I say they're higher end, but when you consider a board having ten of these or so, or a board having ten of these, for, and of course this is just pennies. So if you see the isolation slots and the uh, the spark gaps, now you'll know what they are. Next up on the weekly, what is it? Well, I was going to take this little flashlight. It's sold at Harbor Freight. I saw it look like a good looking flashlight and I am actually very impressed with it. I wasn't actually going to do a video on this, but I was I was going to see if I could make this fit a standard battery pack that I had. I, I do not have the buyer name brand uh, from Harbor Freight, but I do have a lot of 20 volt cordless. You know that this is the 20 volt connection, but I have two more connections here and one of them, this one here is actually connected inside as well. So if I put 20 volts across here, it actually doesn't light up. So in the next weekly, what is it? We take a look at this terminal and what is it? And how do we get it to light up without the right battery connection here? I hope you enjoy the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.